I don't know. Our record isn't as good as three or four that I've seen. The uh, 77 team was amazing. They lost two tournaments and finished runner-up in those two events. The uh, 84, 85 team uh, won ten times. Alan Bratton's uh, senior year, they won nine times. So we haven't we haven't achieved what those three teams achieved for sure. But I'm real proud of the way the kids have kind of uh, pulled together for a common cause this year. It's pretty obvious what they want to do, what they want to accomplish. We have basically the same goals every year. This year, maybe a little higher motivation factor uh, based upon the last two years. So they're, they're ready. Uh, they've prepared the right way. We'll see how they do during the week, but they've definitely prepared the right way. Back to Kevin. How, how difficult was it for him coming in here with the fact that his dad had so much tradition here? You know, was there ever a kind of a, a point where he had to realize that he had to make his own kind of mark in the program? Well, that's the, the beauty of it. He didn't come in as Bob Clay's son. He won the U.S. Junior Championship, the biggest junior golf tournament he can win in the entire world uh, on his uh, 17th birthday. And um, so, our national was on his 18th birthday. He had to be 17 when the tournament started. But anyway, I mean, he, in the following year, he came out and I think he uh, was a... Uh, I, I, that was his 17th birthday, and he was a semifinalist the next year. So Kevin, he had already made a name for himself, AJGA All-American. I mean, he was Kevin Twain when he got here. I actually recruited Kevin. Most people think that that would have been an obvious, well, he's coming here anyway, I don't need to do anything. I went through the entire recruiting process with Kevin. They wrote him letters and watched him play tournaments. He earned that, and so uh, I did that with Kevin. And, uh, I don't think I've never used comparisons with him personally with his dad because I don't think that's fair. It would be just as unfair to try to compare me to Mike Holder or Mike Holder to Labor Harris. It's not really applicable. I mean, Labor Harris was in a completely different era when there were about four really good golf teams. He was battling uh, teams that actually had a budget and he didn't have one. So I don't know what he might have accomplished if he had money. And then. You know, uh, so anyway, I, I don't compare era to era. You can only be as good as you can be in your era and whoop everybody they put out in front of you during your era. And I think Kevin's done a great job of kind of rising up through the ranks in the junior golf and amateur golf. And, I mean, you think he's ranked two in college golf right now, maybe three, and about three or four in the world in amateur golf. So Kevin's earned his spot, I believe. The inner team competitions must be pretty good for this bunch. I know they're all big friends, but they've got a little oh, bit of rivalries in there too. There are some rivalries. That, to, to think about, I was never a very great player. I wasn't very good either. But I know these really great players that come in here, they all have to have an ego. And that's important. If you want to be a great player in golf, I, I bet Jack Nicklaus might have been the most egotistical golfer in the history of the game. And yet, he was one of the most gracious winners and gracious losers, the finest example of sportsmanship we've ever had, ever. And I'm including any player that plays the game today. But within him, there had to be a great ego. Well, okay, on this team, there's three or four of the best amateur golfers in the, in the world on this team. Those guys all have egos, so they're going to collide occasionally. It's not going to be, you know, in, in, in a football team, if you have that, you've got 110 players. You can quarantine egos. You can get them kind of pushed to the side or whatever. In a golf team, it's a very small unit, so that's a challenge, both for the players and for myself. But these guys all have the same goal in mind. They all have the same goals. They all want to be the best college player. They all want to be the best tour player, the best player in the world someday. And they all came to Oklahoma State because they wanted to be on the championship team. So it's easy to put any egos that you might have aside. It's no big deal. Uh, we're all here for the same reason. Uh, and they do push each other. And they give each other a hard time. So. They said that they're good friends off the course, but when they're on it, they hate each other. Is that, is that you know, aiding their development as well? I, I think it does. I think, like I said, uh, if you were a great player at one point, you'd know. I don't know. So, but I do. I do know what they say, and that is that they want to compete against the best. There's no other reason Morgan Hoffman showed up on campus, or Ricky Fowler showed up on campus, or whatever. They came here with Peter Uline. They came here because they wanted to play against the best players. And I've been able to use those guys the last couple of years in recruiting and future years. You know, they want to go someplace where, you, yeah, it's not a given. You know, guarantee a spot up. And, you know, you've got to earn that, and so. Um, and, and not only just a spot on the team, and now who's going to be the number one man? How do you do that? Well, you just play better than the number one man. So. Also, the national creation you guys put up there in the rough school, the fickle's tournament. 
That's pretty good with dry. Talking about the ryegrass? Yeah. And I think it's pretty good. It's pretty <laughs> sticky right now. It's tough. It's going to place a premium on the fairway because the fairways are going to knit down, be really, really tight, uh, and it's going to be a huge advantage to be in the fairway this week. You're not going to advance the ball from 185 or 90 yards onto the green. It's not going to happen. And it couldn't, didn't happen in 03. And we actually had a lot of moisture in that winter of 02, 03. So it was even a little bit thicker then, but it's plenty thick right now to uh, enable you to take a five run out of the rough and knock it on the green. You just won't do it. So now the fairways are generous. They're wide. Uh, if you've been out on these fairways, you realize they're not that narrow. But once you get out of them, you get that ryegrass. And once you get out of that, you've got pretty much death. So I wouldn't go there if I were you. <laughs> you might survive uh, finding your golf ball, but you might get killed by a snake or a kid or something. It's pretty rough out there. Have you been surprised at all or impressed by the, the way Peter's handled all the uh, attention he's gotten? I've been impressed. I think uh, he's had a lot of attention poured his way, and you know he's done a better job of communicating. He gets better with interviews. Uh, he's got a great personality. He needs to be able to show that. He's done a better job of that. Uh, and obviously, he's had a lot of. He's been a number one ranked amateur for a couple, about a year and a half. Been either number one or two ranked college player for for the whole year. So he's had a lot of attention his way, and he's done a nice job of handling it. And done a good job of responding to it by playing pretty well. So. The first, sorry, go ahead. first pair of teammates to be finals with Hogan Ward, first three-time regional champion. Now you get to have this championship at home. Does it feel like maybe the stars are kind of aligning for you guys a little bit? Do the stars have anything to do with it? <laughs> I don't think luck has anything to do with it. I think, uh, I think that the team has prepared very well, and I think that they tried to prepare physically, but they more importantly have tried to prepare themselves mentally to be in the right frame of mind to play well. I don't want to do a lot of coach speak here, that's no fun, but the, uh, that is what you try to do. You try to be in the best mental position you can at all times. That golf course is going to beat people up and it's going to beat some Cowboys up too. And when you least expect it, it's going to knock you right up against, you know, it's going to put you back on your heels. But I think they've done a good job of getting prepared for that. And then, I don't know if the stars are all aligned, but I sure hope so. <laughs> it would be nice. How will this course play differently as a match play than you've played the last two years? You can swing freer from the tee uh, because if you happen to knock one offline or get out there, it won't uh, just be one whole loss, not, not four strokes or three strokes. <clears throat> if you uh, uh, drive it in the, the fairway, guy that hits it just four feet in the rough, I mean, you've got some mental advantage on him right away. So, you know, I mean, and you're just playing that one guy. You just got to whoop that one guy. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an advantage, I think, if you play from the fairway. It'll be a different match match play course than it been. Uh, if we'd have played match play last week in Colorado, everybody would have been just swinging as hard as they could, hitting it as far as they could. Uh, wouldn't have been a big advantage to be in the fairway because the rough, there wasn't any rough. They weren't, that's not their fault. They just didn't have the weather this year to be able to get some rough. So I think that it'll be a great match play course because guys will be swinging freely and trying some things maybe they wouldn't normally do. The scores you put up in the first two rounds last week when you went in cold had to be quite an eye opener for the rest of the field. Oh, I don't know. I didn't talk to any of the other coaches, <laughs> but uh, it, was a, it was a nice eye opener for me. I thought that was great. I didn't expect scores that low. Even though I thought the course was pretty easy, I didn't, I didn't expect scores that low because the conditions were so bad. Uh, the first day was just, just really tough. It was cold and windy. And, uh, we just never got comfortable the whole day. And when you're 51, you never get comfortable. Once you get behind the cold, you're done. So I, uh, I stayed cold the whole week. But the kids played really, really well. I think we only had two rounds over par out of the 15 that we played. So in the first 36 holes. Yeah, none in the first 36 holes were even par or under. So I'm real happy with that because I mean, everybody will tell you, that regional is no fun. It's like going to the PGA Tour qualifying. There's only two outcomes. And, you know, one of them's really good and the other is not so good. So you, uh, you just kind of want to be in the right frame of mind to play well. If you take care of your business and you're a good team, most of the seeded teams come out of the regionals if they'll take care of their business. Not all the time. Who have you seen out there all year that you think will be there at the end? I think uh, I mean, UCLA has played good from beginning to end this year. I think Alabama's played that way all year long. 
Georgia Tech didn't play that way necessarily too early, but they've been great this spring. They've played very, very well. Those three teams, and Florida has played good from the beginning of the year to the end. So those are the teams that I think they've never been out of the top six or seven, any of those teams, the whole year. So so all those guys in the 40 mile an hour breeze here in the room? We, Coach Holder and I prayed for win back in 03, and we got calm four straight days, so I won't do any praying on the win. I'll stay away from that. But it would be nice to have some win. It could be good just to uh, get everybody's attention, make you know you're alive. You're not home. It's a win. Peterson, of course, beat him up pretty good initially. Did you have to give him a pep talk like, hey, Peter, it's not you, it's just the guy. I had to talk him off a ledge. Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> the course really beat him up his freshman year. And he. And, he, and most of it, I always try to tell him, it's just like anything in life, it's your attitude toward it. Mm -hmm. He had a bad attitude toward the golf course. I mean, he has a great attitude about the golf course right now. He honestly believes it's an advantage for him. Mm -hmm. If you would have asked him uh, in the fall of 08, uh, he could never have come to that conclusion, mm -hmm. ever. Not even with help, he couldn't have gotten there. So he, he didn't like the golf course. He seemed to, uh, but I think that, like anything else in life, he took, once he changed his attitude about it, mm -hmm. he came back that second semester and he would eat training table every day with me. And he didn't say, Coach, I'm going out to play. He'd say, Coach, get your sticks. We're going to play. He wanted to prove to me he was going to take this course head on. And it didn't happen overnight, but he eventually found a, a way to play the golf course. And, I mean, I looked at him one day and I said, Peter, you hit the ball 320. You don't even need a driver. If you want to hit a three, would go ahead. So he's learned to play the golf course, be aggressive when he needs to, and to back off and just get the ball and play when he needs to. But... He learned a great lesson in life that that golf course, if you let a golf course beat you up, there's a lot of things that are going to beat you up. And uh, he, he won that battle. At least he won the battle to get him to this point right now. If he had continued in, in, in that present state of mind, it wouldn't have been a very good outcome. But, but it, to his credit, he figured it out himself. So it wasn't anything I did. Anything else for Coach? Was there a defining moment for Kevin, you think, where now that maturity process kind of took hold for him? You know, a lot of people have asked me that about Kevin because he won as a freshman. He had two runner-up finishes and he won the regional. As a sophomore, he won a golf tournament and had two, three or four of the top fives. Uh, last year, he got better. was a second-team All-American. There was a day when, uh, uh, after the national championship last year, um, he, was, he came to Stillwater. He called me. He was coming up here to get some gloves. He had left them in for the summer in his locker room. He, uh, he called me up and said, Coach, you're at the golf course. I can't get in. I said, yeah, I'm in the office. So I went out and got him. He came in the, right into the locker room. And he stopped by that that, uh, that wall that has the first team All-Americans and the second team and third team. Well, he was the second team All-American last year. And he stopped and he looked at that spot where the first team All-Americans were. And he said, uh, I'm going to be there next year. So maybe that time. Maybe it was about then when he just kind of made a decision that was what he was going to do. Knew he was talented enough to do it. Uh, I don't know that he's going to be first team All American, but he's kind of right there on the precipice. So uh, I think that moment was like, you know what? I control this. I can do this done. So uh, it's pretty neat for me. I didn't. I didn't prompt that. I didn't talk about that. He just went. Boom! There it is. And I'm going to be on that one next year. So maybe, maybe that. Anything else?